Iranians are due to choose a new president in the coming days. But the election is turning out to be crucial, not just for Tehran, but for the entire world, with hardliners dominating the polls. What will be the future of the Iran nuclear deal? On the streets of Tehran, occasional posters urge Iranians to vote. Calls echo the need for a single voice. One crucial for the future of an eternal Iran. Iran's elections are fast approaching. The country goes to polls on the 18th of June. The presidential campaigns have kicked off. But what makes them different this time is a lack of fanfare and an atmosphere of indifference. The vote comes at a crucial time for Iran. A lot has changed in the last four years, turning the Iranian political landscape upside down. Discontent is on the rise over the economic crisis. Deadly crackdowns marked anti-government protests. Several political prisoners have been executed. And tensions peaked with the United States after the killing of Qasem Soleimani. The elections themselves are heavily polarized. They are divided between the hardliners and the moderates. But this year, the hardliners have an upper edge. The Guardian Council has banned most prominent reformists. They really made a mistake by disqualifying all these. I think they should have done something to keep some candidates, that not all of them be on the same faction as Mr. Ibrahim Raisi or someone else. It would have been better if they left a reformist to face conservative or something like previous years. Seven candidates have been chosen, out of which five are hardliners and the other two are lesser-known moderates. The leadership has been accused of fixing the polls, the most politically influenced one in the Republic's history. I sent a letter to the Supreme Leader yesterday about what I had in mind and if he can help us with the June elections. Of course, he can act according to what he deems fit as it is about the country's interests and the work is being done by the Guardian Council. In focus is hardline judiciary chief Ibrahim Raisi. He is a close ally of Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei. Raisi has spent most of his career in Iran's judiciary. He then became the custodian of Astan Quds Razavi, one of Iran's wealthiest charitable foundations. Raisi has always been a Khamenei favorite. He picked Raisi to become Iran's chief justice in 2019. And now, with the wetting of the candidates, Khamenei has nearly handed the elections to Resi. The candidates were nominated and the Council of Guardians, in accordance with its duty, did its work. The immediate and main problem of the country is the economic issue, which must be addressed seriously, and which the candidates must talk about when they address the people. The economy has always played a key role in elections. And no one knows that better than Ayatollah Khamenei. Tehran is going through its worst economic crisis since 1979. The crippling sanctions coupled with the pandemic means that the inflation rate is at nearly 50%. Any candidate who wants to win must make it his top agenda. But also at stake is the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. While internal politics rarely affect foreign policy, with Khamenei having the final say in the issue, the question is which government can take credit for it. If the deal is saved at the last moment possible, 
the next president will benefit from the lifting of sanctions. The idea Khamenei will delay the deal may sound odd, especially at the cost of his own country's economy. But for Khamenei, rescuing the economy must be balanced with the necessity of preserving his own power. Having his own candidate as president during this time would further boost the supreme leader's hold domestically. Polls suggest that voter turnout could be dismally low. Activists have called for a boycott of the election. And the hashtag no to Islamic Republic is trending. While the elections are by no means free or fair, dissent now challenges Khamenei's immense authority. A large voter turnout is crucial to establish legitimacy, one that has been battered over the last four years. West Asia Bureau, we on World is One.